Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon, you're watching Israeli News Live. Got a couple of interesting uh, things I wanted to show you right here, friends, and uh, one here is the Netflix here. You know, they came out with a brand new uh, film on the White Helmets. Of course, they've been nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize, this uh, very obvious group who is... Uh, you know, used for propaganda all over the world. RT just did a, another breaking story about how that they fake or stage their actual events, uh, only to get, garner support. In this uh, trailer here that was done uh, for Netflix shows that these guys are great heroes. They're there rescuing everyday ordinary citizens, rescuing the Syrian people from tragedy, uh, from all the bombs being dropped all over Syria, Aleppo, other places such as that. And these are supposed to be the good guys, the White Helmets as they're called. And, but in reality, and in reality, these guys here, a lot of times they're working for the bad guys. They're working for <clears throat> al-Nusra and other agencies like that. But they are regarded as the heroes of Syria. But there really is a group. But it's not called the White Helmets. It is the Civil Defense uh, Team of Syria. And, of course, they wear red helmets instead of the white helmets. Now, I bring this up because I saw this right here on twi Twitter, a guy named Walid, who shares this particular video right here. And I'm going to blow this up for you so you can see it. This is the White Helmets. They are getting ready uh, to supposedly rescue this guy. Now, at first, you might think he's dead. I'm going to play it. I want you to watch it. And notice here, wait just a second, let me turn the volume up on this one here, right? The volume is up here. I want you to see what happens here. The cameraman's trying to find a good position here. Uh, they're froze. They're not moving. They're ready to start moving the rocks and the rubble. They're not doing anything yet, though. they got to wait for the guy to start screaming. Watch. I mean, can you believe it? Now they're going to rescue him. Oh, wow. His legs look really banged up, don't they? And he's screaming. He does a great job on that, right? Now, let's take a look at this guy. This here is where he's posing with the guys after he was rescued. All right, so... Picture taken as a souvenir of the occasion of the feet of the White Helmets and the actor who played the victim in the latest fake video uh, via um, Jay Alaskar in Syria. That's the guy that actually took the picture there and has uh, shared what is going on. Here he is again right here. Uh, the, the, the guy, he's actually a soldier who's playing this part right here. But again, let's take a look at this one more time because I just find it fascinating the cameraman's there, you know, he's getting ready, looking around, getting ready. They're, they're just kind of frozen in place. You can hear him walking around on the rocks. Now, here they go, into action. Now, I want to show you something, though. Let's back up just a little bit right in here, okay? Let me get it. All right, notice this here. He's got all this stuff on him, but it looks like they put the dust on him after they put him in position, put a few rocks on him there. You notice right there, in fact, it's almost like the guy is pointing at it for us right here. This part of his pants are all clean. That's because when they put him in position, they laid the rocks in place, but then they just kind of threw. You can almost see the splash here of the dust and the angle that it goes across his pants leg right there. Ah, it's just kind of interesting, you know, to see how they do this here. Let's, let's back it up. They're getting ready, though. They're all being really still. They're not moving, not doing anything, waiting. I guess everybody's waiting to scream at the same time as well.
I'm just blown away by this, guys. I really am. <laughs> I don't know what to think about stuff like this. It's just nutty, isn't it? Okay, also, let's kind of go on here. Now, the, here's the funny thing. The EU, they have approved a resolution to counter the Russian media propaganda, as they call it. Now, isn't that kind of ironic? The European Parliament, EU Parliament, approves a resolution to counter the Russian media propaganda. They actually, during the debates here, they named Russia, uh, or, or excuse me, RT, Just Russia Today, hour, they actually... The European Parliament <clears throat> adopted a resolution seeking to counteract perceived... Ru they have named uh, RT Today twice uh, in this particular news event here. <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> Pardon me. I want to get to the part here because I want you to be able to see what some of the uh, some of the EU members are saying here. It is quite deplorable, in fact. Um, we are at war with Russia. We are on a collision course with each other, traveling faster than a jet fighter. Russia is trying to damage the EU. The enemy is pushing its narrative hard. The Kremlin wants to split Europe. It forces its information into our countries. What the Russians and the extremists don't like is freedom. So Russia and ISIS share the same aim. They're toxic. I mean, can you actually believe that? Can you believe that they're considering Russia toxic? What did Russia do? That's really what I would like to know. What did Russia do? I know they would like to say... Um, oh, they invaded Ukraine. Russia did not cause the coup in Ukraine. When Poroshenko, excuse me, when uh, Yanukovych, who is the legal prime minister of the Ukrainian government, when he rejected the EU deal for the gas to, uh, to come from the European Union and accept their pipeline that they wanted to bring in, and instead accepted President Putin's deal because it would save his country millions and millions of dollars so that the people would not be so indebted to the European Union's New Deal. And yet he still wanted to be part of the EU. Now, it wasn't that he was backing out on being part of the European Union. He just didn't want their deal. This is when the coup begins. This is what's so strange. That's when the coup began. And of course, the U.S., was completely behind this coup. A lot of evidence has shown the CIA very much involved in the coup as well. Neo-Nazi thugs and the actual prime minister of Ukraine invited the Russian military to rescue him. So if you want to say that Russia was invited to Syria, Russia was also invited to Ukraine as well. All right, don't forget that. Sometimes that's kind of overlooked. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I say something that might sound like it's pro-Russia? Oh, I guess we're going to ban Israeli News Live too, right? Well, they seem to have done that in Slovakia already as well. In fact, by the way, Google supposedly crashed all over the entire state of Slovakia. We got that news this morning coming out of Slovakia there in Bratislava where I was at this morning uh, dealing with some personal business there. So that was kind of another interesting thing going on. There is some weird things happening. And for them to liken Russia as if Russia is some kind of war criminal. Russia's done some kind of evil thing. What did Russia do? You know, Russia didn't go put hundreds of thousands of troops on EU's border to make them all nervous. Yes, the Russia did back up the separatists. I agree with that. Sure, they backed them up. They also went over there and they took Crimea because that's where their naval port is. And you can't blame them because these thugs that were being backed in this coup were genociding anybody that happened to be a Russian uh, back or, or you know Russian descent Ukrainian. Look at the facts. And Mr. Poroshenko called on all Jews to register with the government. Does that sound familiar? Sounds like another neo-Nazi plan, if you ask me. But anyway. Very sad indeed to even see these things that are going on. Uh, but I just wanted to share this with you, especially this thing about the white helmets. They talk about propaganda. And, you know, if anybody's got propaganda, all you got to do is take a look at this right here, and you know who the propaganda machine is all about. These guys right here waiting for the camera guy to get into position before they say, 
Let us roll. Mm. You even hear them talking in the background, getting ready. Okay? Get it the right position. Okay? Ready? Hey, set. And action. It's ridiculous. Ridiculous. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom.